PT 25 Venture Capital, puluhan angel investor, dan ratusan startup global dan regional hadir di acara Global Venture Summit 2017 di Nusa Dua Bali. Konferensi yang berlangsung selama tiga hari ini memfokuskan pada pembangunan ekosistem bisnis startup di Asia Tenggara. Mengumpulkan dana para pengusaha dan investor sukses untuk bertemu dan mendanai generasi para pendiri bisnis startup berikutnya. Bagi para investor, negara-negara Asia Tenggara seperti Indonesia menjadi pilihan tepat karena diproyeksikan keuntungan tumbuh besar 5,7 persen di tahun 2017-2018 atau hampir dua kali lebih cepat seperti di Amerika Serikat. Salah satu investor asal Amerika Serikat menilai Indonesia sebagai negara yang berkembang pesat dengan populasi pengusaha startup yang cukup tinggi. Yeah. So there's yeah, there's a huge opportunity. There's a, there's a reason lots of venture funds are coming here, including us. Uh, the amount of capital going into the region, you know, kind of crossed two billion last year, which is a huge milestone. Um, you're seeing a lot of, lack of better term, unicorn companies that have raised, you know, at billion dollar valuations with Gojek and several others. Uh, Selain bertatap muka langsung dengan perusahaan besar dan investor, para penggiat startup di acara Global Venture Summit kali ini berkesempatan mengikuti ajang kompetisi berhadiah 50 ribu dolar Amerika, serta berkesempatan mengunjungi kawasan Silicon Valley, Amerika Serikat. Dari 45 peserta yang mengikuti kompetisi startup teknologi kreatif, Octagon Studio dengan aplikasi Augmented Reality, sebuah game card 3D yang ditujukan bagi pendidikan anak-anak keluar sebagai pemenang. Jadi kita bikin Magic uh, Reality application yang harus didownload lewat App Store sama Play Store. Lalu sebenarnya bisnis model kita itu menjual produk flashcard. Nah, produk flashcard ini bisa didapetin dengan harga sangat affordable, hanya 55 ribu saja di Indonesia. Lalu mbak download aplikasi di App Store sama Play Store secara gratis. Lalu setelah download aplikasinya, uh, mbak tinggal ngeluarin kartunya aja, terus handphonenya di Uh, poin ke si flashcardnya, lalu ada 3D uh, konten 3D yang sangat menarik yang bakal keluar dari si kartu itu. Cuman uh, pasti lihatnya dari screen ya. Mm -hmm. gitu. Dan ini gunanya apa sih mbak? Untuk edukasi sih mbak. Jadi mm -hmm. sebagai additional educational learning tool for kids. Penggiat startup di tanah air dengan kekuatan teknologi digital saat ini sedang tumbuh subur. Tingginya jumlah pengguna internet yang mencapai 80 juta orang menjadi peluang menjanjikan bagi para penggiat startup mengembangkan usaha. Bahkan investor dan capital venture di bidang digital technology turut melirik Indonesia sebagai kawasan berpotensi untuk menanamkan modal mereka. Ayu Ngurah Dewi, Badu. Startup, startup, startup. Sekarang kalau kita bicara mengenai bisnis, kata startup itu pasti langsung menjadi populer. Apalagi startup yang berbasis teknologi. Nah di Indonesia saat ini kita sudah memiliki lebih dari 1.300 perusahaan startup. Dan pemerintah juga berencana untuk melahirkan ribuan jumlah startup yang diharapkan akan membantu yang membuat perekonomian Indonesia khususnya ekonomi kreatif itu jauh lebih bergairah. Nah, biasanya apa yang dibutuhkan oleh sebuah perusahaan startup itu adalah pendanaan. Ya, dibutuhkan investor. Nah, pada saat ini di Bali diadakan Global Venture Summit untuk mempertemukan antara investor dan juga para pemain startup itu sendiri. Nah, insight kali ini berada di Bali untuk berbicara langsung Bersama penyelenggara Global Ventures Summit, ia adalah Ahmed Syabani, dari Managing Director dari Managing Partner dari Park Pine Capital, dan dia sekarang juga berada di Bali. Halo, Ahmed. Good morning. How are you? How are Welcome you? to Bali. Thank you for having me. And it's a great atmosphere, Global Ventures Summit for the first time being done. Exactly. Everybody's In, happy. Everybody's happy. Now, why Bali? Why now and what would you like to get out of this event? Great, great question. So uh, why now? Uh, because what's happening in, in Indonesia and this part of the world, the high growth and uh, uh, the appetite for uh, foreign investments to come to mm -hmm. this part of the world. And, and why Bali? Because of the obvious reasons when you uh, tell speakers or um, 
investors come to another city, metropolitan city, that don't want to really mm -hmm. leave San Francisco or the U.S. But when you tell them Bali, okay, when am I coming? So uh, that's uh, that's why Bali, and um, we want to make everybody's it, excited to get exactly, to Bali. Exactly, yeah. absolutely, and they uh, they bring a family, and they make some they mix pleasure and they mix business. So it's uh, it's a great combination, and uh, we want to really have it annually every year in Bali and make it uh, the biggest technology conference on the planet within the next five years. So. Uh, so, so far we've been very successful for year mm -hmm. one uh, and we're happy everybody's happy and uh, hope they're coming again next year. Now, Ahmed, why, um, what can we find in this type of summit? Who are we meeting here and where do they come from? Because uh, I hear there's a lot of Silicon Valley, you know, big wigs descending on this uh, right. island. Tell, tell us a little bit about what the... Right. the content and what the summit is all about. Of course, so uh, basically these people are coming here, are investors, uh, mostly of the speakers are investors from the U.S. who have an appetite for this part of the world. They see the high growth, the, um, the level, of, the customer acquisition cost is so low at this stage that they see the, the opportunity yeah. and then within the next two years it's not going to be the same. So uh, they're actually hedging their situation and diversifying their portfolio by coming here and trying to write more checks and um, getting to, to meet these um, startups um, and then probably make the investments in the coming months. Mm -hmm. um, t tell us a little bit about the startup uh, situation in the United States. Is, is, it, is it getting saturated now? Is that what you're saying? And, but while at the same time there's still a lot of money looking for you know, that, that next uh, unicorn. Right, right. Well, <laughs> Silicon Valley is a great place, a uh, very unique place. Um, and what's great about it is the soft infrastructure. If you want to start any kind of startup, you're going to find all the service that complements what you're trying to build. If you want to have like um, a subscription uh, service, you're going to have the tools to do that, for example. But uh, but what's uh, what's also challenging, as you said, is the saturation and that you really have to um, add real value um, if you if you want to be uh, not just raise capital but also be profitable and and be a unicorn as you said but here there's a lot of potential that to take technology from the US and adapt to the culture um, there, there's a that and that's why a lot of the um, uh, investors are coming here mm -hmm. um, what kind of opportunities particularly for Silicon Valley investors when they go to this part of the world not just Indonesia but the Southeast Asia and the uh, ASEAN countries in general because we are sort of the emerging market we are you know where the young demographics are and we are where growth actually still happens in our economy Right. I mean, the models that are successful in the U.S. that with a cultural twist that it's working here, uh, for example, uh, I would say a Gojek example, but things that adapts to what people are already doing, but uh, with a component of a technology part from the U.S., this mix makes a lot of investors, okay, this is a good, uh, probably an opportunity. And they ask also the local VCs to uh, maybe in the first round, they, they have a co-investment and then probably lead later on. Uh, you mentioned the Gojek, and uh, actually, the, you know, the platform is similar to the, you know, Uber. It's the idea of, you know, the ride sharing, and yet it has the local twist. It it has that Indonesian flavor to it, using motorbike taxis, for example. So, you th there are quite a lot of startup companies also present in this summit. Can you tell us, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about them? What, what do you see? I mean, do you see any exciting ideas coming yeah. up? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I, uh, on the top of my head, there is like two really great startups. Uh, one that does what Alexa in the U.S. is doing, but in Bahasa. So like uh, a little bit of an AI component and uh, uh, machine learning um, in in this part of the world. So they're um, they're doing a great job. And another one, for example, for uh, that adapts to the culture uh, is the um, uh, the habit of um, of cooked meals at home. So mm -hmm. they're uh, instead of just um, trying to do a delivery service, they try to power women to to sell their cooked meals from home which is a great idea and i think it's going to be very successful so these kind of ideas that have a cultural twist with a technology component i think it's going to be very very successful how do they compare startups in uh, asia uh, and also particularly here in indonesia compared with for example the startups is in the u.s i, I think they're yeah they're closely seeing what's happening uh they um they're going to be uh, an increase in the ticket price uh, in the seed round. So now um, seed in the U.S. is Series A here, as everybody mm -hmm. knows. So a two million check would be Series A here. So that's going to change very soon because the growth and everybody's acquiring customers now at a low cost that this is the right time. And uh, 
So I think you're going to hear a lot of great deals happening uh, during maybe today or a couple of weeks after GVS. And um, yeah, and, and I hear there's going to be a pitching battle as well. Yeah, so yeah. tell us a little bit about that because I'm sure this is very exciting and can actually encourage some, you know, the startups. This is a, a good way to get, you know, your uh, projects, you know, funded. Exactly, exactly. We're really happy that the Global Venture Summit is the first international technology event um, in this part of the world. I'm not going to just only say Bali. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great conferences, but we're really the first to bring um, international, uh, especially from Silicon Valley to here. And to even make it greater, the $50,000 pitch battle competition uh, is going to get more people excited. And um, I think it's the first. And uh, we have over 30 startups participating. It's going to be just five minutes. So I understand it's going to be nerve wracking, but uh, um, it's not just about winning. You get yourself exposed, and there's a lot of other investors in the room that are going to come meet you and write checks. What would create the winner? A lot of things. It's, uh, it's a tough question. So uh, it's a mix of um, if you know what you're doing, is if there's validation, if there is uh, uh, the background of the team, uh, a lot of really great things that you try to see less risk in different uh, startups. Uh, and then you, uh, there's, I think there's not only one winner, it's going to be many, many winners. Like pitch battles always have uh, other great companies coming out of it. So uh, it's, it's a platform that will. Uh, create a lot of successful companies. You had five minutes, you know, it's not that long to c present your ideas, but normally what are they looking for I mean, in the first couple of minutes of presenting? Uh, what do potential investors yeah. really say? Okay, this is good, or... Mm, yeah, so they, so they want to first know what position the startup is. Is it like pre-revenue? Is it like uh, already validated or not? Like, what are you really making money or are you just still validating? Or if not, what's your background? Do you want to start something like this? If you're like uh, in advertising, have you worked 20 years and bringing your clients to this new startup? And then if you know your numbers, you really have to know your numbers and, and why this is um, different than anything else. So. so it's not necessarily the product. Say, for example, I come up and say, yeah, I've got this great idea for an AI that can actually clean my, you know, clean my house in 10 minutes and it doesn't use any electricity or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, if you know, uh, if you've already ha been in that business mm -hmm. for 20 years and you have the database of these customers and you decided to switch that, then you'd be very interesting, right? Even if you haven't really... Uh, started it. So it's, uh, yeah, so it's a mix of uh, a lot of things. Okay, um, I hear there's, there's quite a few uh, venture capitalists here and also angel investors. What kind of investment are we talking about that is available for potential startups to really tap into and take advantage of if they can come up with the right ideas and the right product? I think the, um, the US investors are very open. They just want to understand that there's return. Uh, so the checks can be from like um, 20,000 up to like a couple of million. So you just need to uh, tell them that there's going to be 10x returns or like five, something that really deserves their, uh, their ROI because at, at the very end they're going to report to their LPs and they want to compare that to the U.S. performance. So you need to think like an investor and really be able to, um, uh, to convince them that you're going to be delivering. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I would say you can really get uh, a large, uh, like a big check from these guys if you know what you're talking about. But what would you, what would get you excited, Ahmed, when you when it comes up with a new startup coming to you? Is it the p product, or is it the potential? Is it the the pos you know, the scalability, or what are we looking at? It's definitely scalability. Uh, how how fast this can happen, and if there's any IP. But uh, I'm more excited in this region about scale and how quickly this mm -hmm. can happen, and really about the team. Like um, I love people from this region and how uh, passionate about it, uh, making these teams mm -hmm. that can work very well together. Um, and I think I enjoy. You, you're going to spend a lot of time with the company if you're investing in it. So. Uh, it's a very long uh, relationship, like marriage, as people say. Uh, one of the speakers was just saying, um, uh, these VCs startup relationships last longer than the average marriage. So it's a really commitment. And uh, um, so the team and definitely um, the scale uh, and the validation that you can scale. But do you see any sort of big difference? Because when we talk about the you know, different characters, but the, also the different the cultural approach, um, 
example, Indonesians, Southeast Asians, obviously very different to, for example, Europeans and Americans. But do you see differences in maybe approaches to how to create a, a product or how to market or basically just how to collaborate amongst all the, the you know, the Asian startup is that's very different for example for the from the americans from yeah the yeah Africa, i mean um, Valley's it, right to. so so it's um i think it's um it's not just only indonesians who are uh, launching startups in indonesia so uh there's a lot of people uh, from different parts of the world who are trying to operate in this region uh, and that's making indonesians very uh, like jealous okay no it's it's our market we want to do something um, that's um, that's great for the country. So, um, I think so is that the social entrepreneurship components. You know, the, the, the we want the startups to not just make money for the investors and for the people. Actually, can I do good for the country? Can yeah, come I mean, up with real solutions to real problems, right? Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a great angle. Uh, mm -hmm. If you can do that from the beginning and make money also off of it, that would be yeah, great. Which is very important. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh, because some people, oh, I'm just going to be focused, and maybe later the money will come. But it's really important to have both. Uh, yeah, I think that's why this Gojek model is very successful because it also addresses the consumer need for speedy transportation, or whether it's to you know get your uh, deliveries done much right. quicker and then cheaper, but also to create. Uh, work to create jobs for people who, who need jobs. Exactly, and it took a couple of years before it's Gojek, right? Like uh, mm -hmm. it launched and people were maybe skeptical, they were trying it and then, uh, but because of the principle uh, is based on what people are doing every day, I think that's why it was successful. Mm -hmm. What would you say, uh, because I hear that, you know, with a thousand startups, you know, hundreds would die and only a few would actually survive and survive uh, sustainably. What would be the key component that enables a startup to actually become like, uh, you know, the well-established, like, like an Uber or the Airbnb and, you know, these types of I think at this stage, yeah. companies? I think at this stage, the support of uh, everybody in this region is great. Like the government here is very supportive and there's a lot of uh, uh, agencies, government agencies that are supportive to these um, startups. So um, I think maybe we need here a uh, longer time for uh, a longer time to support these companies. To see when we say longer, how long? One year or five years or it, ten years? It, no, I wouldn't say ten years for sure. Like, <laughs> but, maybe, uh, but maybe give them the support more support um, than, than um, since it would be like a, a regional initiative um, because of also the president is, is very keen on mm -hmm. bringing more Silicon Valley um, interest in the region to, to just back them up with um, whatever resources that would, um, that would just buy them more time and uh, reduce their burn rate so they have more, more oxygen to breathe. So, but I can't say an exact time, but uh, different startups have different, but, um, different timing. But, just Maybe. have to be more patient, yeah. and then you know, and if things don't work out, just pivot. Not, yeah. yeah, not yeah. panic or you know, pack your bags and exactly, <laughs> exactly. You need try to have again. Like, yeah. But other than the financial aspect, which is obviously maybe the easier part of the component, what other things can the Silicon Valley uh, experts bring, particularly to country? like Indonesia, where we are still developing in all sorts of ways, you know, the, our human uh, resources, uh, education, and just the, the capability to be a good entrepreneur is still very much uh, at its developing stage. Right, I think um, there can be technologies brought from, uh, from the valley to here. Uh, there's a lot of, for example, there's um, a social app that uh, the technology is developed in the US but it's acquiring customers in Asia so maybe these kind of collaborations uh, between maybe social influencers and technologies yeah. uh, in the US can make something big here um, so um, so something like that would be would be great bringing more uh, more know-how to this region and also combining that with the growth to make something really great mm. Adaptability is a very important component. Obviously, you can have a good product and you think it's great, but then actually once it's out in the market, uh, suddenly, okay, nothing seems to be going on uh, so much. How, how to make sure that the 
whatever it is that you're creating will uh, will have a consumer excitement or acceptance. Yeah. That, that's a great question. Um, I think to be adaptable, you need to um, have a background or passion to what you're trying to do because um, if it's not working, um, or it's not picking up, you got to be changing things. And this change is going to come from experience or, uh, of course, persistence is great. But it would um, be very beneficial if you have something uh, that you can leverage from your work experience or your network. So, um, so you don't lose hope, as you said, in the, in the first months or first year. Uh, and it takes, uh, takes many, many years for, for an overnight success. So, uh, so I think uh, uh, being adaptable uh, with, uh, with the right background and the right network is, is, very, is very important. Mm -hmm. What sort of background do you see as, uh, you know, for a startup company, they always, always ask them, you know, what you look for? Uh, in a startup company, they always say, oh, it's the team, the team, the team. I mean, what's your uh, perspective on this? And what kind of people would you like to you know, right. put your money on when it comes to startup companies? Uh, I think, um, so the right people has, has a lot of, uh, I like people who treat each other really well, and uh, even in very stressful and tough times, and if they're, um, you also look at the history of the, why, how, why these guys are coming together. Did they just meet yesterday at the, at the conference and just started to launch something, or did they really have um, two or three years that they've been working together at an agency or a consultancy firm or even at school? Or they have so do they have to be smart people, educated people, people with you know, experience, or can they just be anybody? Anybody, anybody really can, can do it as long as it's, uh, you know, um, they're, they're, very, they're taking it like their life is depending on it and that they're uh, they're in it for the next 10 or 20 years and um, you, c you can feel it when once you sit with the team is that that this is the right relationship that they're going to be um, uh, that they're going to be um, even making it better uh, and they're not just focused on okay uh, write me a check or give me the money now it's about how we're going to acquire the next I want to be the next Steve Jobs yeah, yeah no, no, no. It's, not gonna, it's like how are you going to make like be better let's uh, can you connect me with these guys to you know uh, have um, more success here uh, from the US for example uh, how can we um, reach the next thousand or, or um, couple of thousand customers so questions like that uh, you can you can spot if mm -hmm. it's the right opportunity things would you like to see start, uh, come up from Indonesia when it comes to the products that addresses the that, that can solve existing problems I mean given the, right. the huge size of the country just the sheer variety of you know communities and the different types of problems I and mean, what right. give us some examples of things or products or services that you think wow this is gonna yeah be Good. Be good. I think fintech, uh, the fragmentation. Yeah, fintech's uh, growing. Yeah. 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 Like the fragmentation of the payment platform, being mm -hmm. people still paying here with bank transfers. That's yeah. not going to be. There's that lack of trust still yeah. when it comes to. It's not um, security the security of the system. And it's a big opportunity for someone come coming in, and just um, consolidating all that to some extent, and just have one payment uh, platform or, or wallet that would ease uh, things happening and it's gonna it's gonna have to happen very soon so this is something that I'm very excited about and maybe we're gonna get involved into that with one of the, uh, the tell me a little bit about what kind of things were, would you like to be involved in? so um, part of this fintech is uh, all about policies and, and uh, the right uh, connections with the with the right people maybe in the government or the policymakers so uh, we're trying to work with the um, with the right people to uh, to have one uh, one uh, payment method or one wallet that would act as a uh, sort of like a PayPal thing or a Bitcoin yeah thing uh, yeah I mean like maybe a, a PayPal thing or something that's mm -hmm. uh, uh, E easier than uh, than a bank transfer, people would just you know uh, immediately pay, and it's not um, only um, powered by a startup. So there's a lot of startups that create their own uh, wallet or their own payment platform, something that can work with any any um, uh, mm -hmm. any customer, and then also can 
uh, have customers from uh, from the U.S. So mm, yeah, that's one infrastructure is one of, still one of the main problems here in Indonesia, like bandwidth, for example. And the other thing is, of course, just the security aspect of it. How how much is you know security and the potentials for hacking and fraud and so on? Is is this sort of this hindering the growth of technology-based uh, in services? I think it, this part can be outsourced to the to the right people, like especially if you're talking about uh, security here and mm -hmm. and um, working with fintech with security. You can always make sure that you're at par with all the great companies in the U.S. So this component can be uh, easily um, taken care of, and uh, and then just start making it happen, right? And see uh, because you're not, if you're just too scared to. Uh, to go forward, we're, we're but is this not also a problem everywhere? There's potential it, for hacking yeah. security. I mean, what happened to Yahoo, for example? And uh, right, right. Of course, it's uh, it's a problem everywhere, and it happens in politics and in, yeah. in not just startups. But uh, yeah. but I mean, uh, you still have to go forward mm -hmm. and just let this part. Um, uh, you let go of this fear because you're not gonna. You're not going to move forward and just work with the best security uh, teams or companies to make sure that you're on the right track. And this is why there's a lot of secu tech security companies are mm -hmm. um, are out there trying to develop. And what I know is about especially this the digital or technology-based uh, applications is because we are operating in a virtual world. There is, you know, it's borderless, which means that me here in Indonesia, you in the US, we can just basically do the same thing at the same time. And it's uh, now we are seeing sort of the regulatory aspect of it. That's actually um, people trying to navigate their way. What sort of regulation do you think would be perfect for the virtual world when it comes to you know, companies fulfilling their tax obligation? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's, that's a great question. I think uh, governments would have to work uh, with each other uh, on, on um, making things like another United Nations, uh, of something like that, like the, <laughs> the digital world. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But of course, it's competition because mm. you're, you're getting more money in the country. Um, so um, it's it's tricky because you want to have both. You want to be um, open to everybody and work with governments, but at the same time, you're competing for the same customers. Uh, so a customer in the U.S. paying for, um, for an Indonesian company, uh, um, Indonesia likes that, but maybe other uh, maybe U.S. wants to have more. Um, uh, the company wants to have more in in the in this in the U.S. So it's it's about. Um, I think fair competition, and I think the governments should uh, uh, fast uh, fast track the um, this to this region. So for Indonesia, more openness to uh, to mm. to help the sort of being more uh, competitive. I mean that's why it's called disruptive economy. It disrupts. Right. But I think are we uh, getting to a point, or are we getting close to that point where it's no longer a disruptive economy? It be, it is the economy, and right. everybody else who has not kept up. Just you know, either they you know they adapt or they die. Is that going to be what what the future is for? Definitely, definitely. It's uh, I would expect uh, because there's a lot of also uh, development houses in Bali, uh, like uh, Australia and U.S. There's a lot of um, uh, of the radar uh, development houses that are doing great things, and uh, they're very be doing a lot of uh, I would say potentially disrupt, disruptive technologies and mm -hmm. um, has, has no restriction on, on geography. So uh, uh, we're going to see, uh, has nothing to do with geography. So uh, we'll see what's going to happen. Do you yourself believe that this will be the end of the brick and mortar kind of uh, business I, yeah. and everything would just have to be based on digital, online? Is, is that inevitable? No, I think the opposite, actually. I think uh, there's going to be a lot of immersive technologies uh, that will let you enjoy shopping more. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get into the store and really interact more with what you like. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so for example, a grocery store, like you would actually see more, okay. uh, more interaction with the product. And um, mm -hmm. of course, a very um, famous uh, Amazon store example, you can actually 
go in and pick whatever you want, and then uh, there's no cashier that you can get charged, whatever. So these examples are gonna are gonna happen actually. Um, mm. uh, so opposite what people think is gonna die, actually, it's gonna it's the start of, of something uh, very interesting. Okay, let's go back to Global Ventures Summit. When you packed your bag, you go back to your country. What sort of takeaways would you like to? Uh, I think we'd be interested to get involved with more uh, startups uh, from the region. We're going to be investing with some of the local VCs here, getting more involved with them. Uh, we're going to be preparing for a bigger Global Ventures Summit, so Park Pine Capital will, uh, will probably announce more activities until the next year, but are we going to have uh, more? Are we going to see another one in Bali? Every year, year, every oh, year. Yeah. Even bigger and better, and it's going to be... We're dedicated to making the biggest on the planet, and we will do. Okay, well, sounds like a very ambitious plan, but something that definitely we need. Ahmed, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy your stay here. Thank you, Desi. And Lovely. Uh, hope to see you next year. Exactly, we will do. Thank you so much for having me. Ya demikian bincang-bincang kita bersama penyelenggara ya pemerakarsa dari Global Ventures Summit Ahmed Syabani. Setelah yang berikut ini kita akan berbicara dengan narasumber lainnya masih mengenai startup, perusahaan-perusahaan startup khususnya di Indonesia. Ya, kita lanjutkan insight seputar Global Ventures Summit 2017 yang diadakan di Bali, persisnya di Nusa Dua dan Pasar. Dan kita akan kali ini bertemu dengan Hari Sungkari, Deputi Infrastruktur Backcraft ya, yang hadir juga pada Global Ventures Summit ini. Bagaimana uh, Hari? Baik. Ke Hadiran Indonesia ini kan Global Ventures Summit ini untuk pertama kali yeah. diadakan di Bali. Signifikansinya bagi kita, apa yang kita bisa peroleh dan kenapa penting adanya acara seperti nah, ini di Indonesia? Saya bicara mengenai ini ya, ekosistem startup ya. Salah satu yang kita saya pelajari mengenai startup ekosistem, satu adalah we have to be open kepada siapapun, tapi for the benefit of Indonesia. Itu ada, ada conditional for the benefit kita harus open. Open ini terhadap apa saja? Terhadap startup yang lain juga terhadap uh, pendanaan, hmm. funding. Nah, this is what about global venture is. Mereka datang dari luar negeri, termasuk dari Silicon Valley, dari yes, Amerika Serikat, ya, pasti membawa datang, ya. investasi cukup besar ya potensinya. Nah, tapi pada akhirnya kita tetap harus punya satu pegangan. Hmm. The most benefit for the Indonesian startup. Jadi saya bilang kepada mereka Look, ini country, negara kita ini punya potensial sedemikian besar dan sudah terbukti beberapa tahun terakhir di digital besar. Uh, we have also talented people, tapi kita memerlukan banyak bantuan. So, we said, bring your investment here. We give you our market. But you have to employ the startup for Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Tapi kan berarti kita juga harus bukan saja membuka diri, tapi supaya mereka mau berinvestasi khususnya pada startup kita kita harus memamerkan lah apa yang kita miliki nah apa yang kita bisa tawarkan kepada nah, mereka saat ini sebelum kita buka seperti ini kita harus punya bargaining power and to have that government kita harus punya PR PR yang kemarin kita lakukan ya satu satu talent kita harus bangun talent nah uh-huh. sejak backcraft itu didirikan di tempat saya kita sangat komit untuk membangun talent talent baik itu entrepreneurs Mm-hmm. maupun profesional yang nanti bekerja di situ dan di talent is not uh, kualitas seperti yang biasa-biasa harus excellent mm-hmm. jadi kita punya tanggung jawab untuk membangun startup yang excellence dan talent yang nanti bekerja yang excellence juga mm-hmm. marketnya sudah ada so kalian datangin aja duitnya mungkin beberapa orang bisa membantu kita di teknologi di sistem okay. market nah apa yang selama ini sudah backcraft lakukan karena Bekraf kan sekarang saya lihat timnya jauh lebih komplit ya sudah ada 400 That's orang right. dan budgetnya juga ada tentu saja ada, ya, <laughs> jadi selama ini apa-apa saja yang sudah dilakukan dan bagaimana cara mencari menggali dan juga menumbuhkan talent-talent itu di Indonesia nah ada ada di tempat kami tempat saya ada dua part satu membangun talenta itu satu lagi membangun entrepreneurs ini kita punya program namanya backup 
Backcraft for Pre-Startup. Nah, kita tahu bahwa menurut data di dunia dari Forbes atau dari tempat lain mengatakan hanya 10% startup yang bisa berhasil. Hmm. Ya. Nah, kita aware sekali. Dua tahun yang lalu kita buat kumpul semua, saya undang semua incubator, startup, startup yang gagal dan pemerintah juga kementerian lain. Kita temukan beberapa bahwa banyak beberapa startup itu sebenarnya mereka belum tahu cara mengelola bisnis. Hmm. Kedua, uh, forming dari teamingnya itu nggak tepat. Either mereka semua orang bisnis with no product, itu juga nggak bagus. Atau full of product with no business, nggak tahu cara menjualnya. Jadi kita mengajarkan kepada mereka, salah satunya adalah if you want, kalau kita mendirikan startup, berpartner dengan orang yang komplement terhadap skill kita. Kalau saya seorang salesman, cari orang yang ngerti teknologi. Kalau saya seorang financial, cari orang yang ngerti teknologi. Atau sebaliknya, seorang teknologi, cari orang yang ngerti finance. Itu ajarkan, supaya nggak gagal. Ketiga, make a product that is required by the market. Nah, ada namanya metodologi Lean Innovation, di mana kalau kalian membuat produk atas problem yang ada, itu akan sustain. Karena market akan terpaksa memakai. Diajarin. Nah, kita punya program itu, tiga yang sudah dijalankan tahun 2016. Hmm. Nah, ini bagaimana hasilnya sekarang? Ap Kemarin dari 1.100 orang, lahir 50 startup. Bayangkan, dari 1100 hingga 50. Jadi kalau mungkin 100 ya musik itu. Nggak gampang, tapi we have to done that. Dan itu filternya banyak. Sampai di tengah jalan kalau mereka nggak ini, keluar. Beberapa ada yang mengundurkan diri karena mungkin mereka secara mentality. Uh -huh. Selama tiga bulan itu kita kasih knowledge dan mentality. Uh -huh. Because being a startup, hidup itu nggak, nggak gampang-gampang. Mentality. Startup itu jatuh, bangun jatuh, bangun itu skill yang harus kita bangun. Hmm. Jadi misalnya untuk membuat satu startup itu sukses, kira-kira yang yang paling penting ya tadi yang tentu saja timnya kan penting kan tidak semua kalau uh, pemilik ide kreatif bukan semuanya kreator yang ada malah berantem terus berantem, 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 berantem. Tapi harus ada kombinasi ya. misalnya paham Amin. ide, paham pasar, yes, paham yes. finance dan yes. lain sebagainya. Tapi selain itu apa-apa saja yang diperlukan supaya nanti memang startup ini tidak hanya di start aja tapi nah. up and away dan kalau bisa ekosistem, menjadi ya. besar. Bangun ekosistem. Mereka perlu mentor. Hmm. Jadi selain itu kita bikin jaringan mentor. Ini what happen di tempat startup ekosistem tempat lain seperti Silicon Valley. Selain ada startup ada mentor-mentor. Hmm. Nah itu mentor-mentornya biasanya didapatkan dari mana? Kita cari ya, beberapa startup yang perusahaan sudah sukses atau para eksekutif dari tempat lain atau tidak tertutup kemungkinan kita datangkan dari luar negeri juga. Baik-baik ya. kalau si, si mentor ini mau mengasih seat ya. Ini yang terjadi. Hmm. Jadi memang budaya sharing dan kolaborasi harus terjadi. Jadi kalau kita lihat di startup ekosistem yang lain, bukan hanya karena ada duitnya dan ada talentednya, tapi karena ada budaya kolaborasi, budaya gotong royong. Hmm. Semua kita punya dulu. So, di Silicon Valley itu, dicerita di dalam buku kita, mentor datang kepada startup, dia memberikan 10 ribu dolar. Belum tentu itu kembali. Hmm. So, waktu ditanya, mentor kenapa gitu? This is my time to giving back. Hmm. Karena 20 tahun yang lalu ada yang membiayai saya. Itu yang kita harus bangun. Jadi bukan budaya itu, sharing juga kon, apa kontribusi itu harus kita bangun hmm. nah, mentor itu begitu terus ada lembaga financing nah lembaga financing ini juga yang unik karena bukan dalam mahzab perbankan tapi seperti angel capital venture capital karena para startup ini tidak punya kolateral yeah. kolateral dia apa intellect property hak cipta hmm. apa yang dia ada ya kepala trademark ini. nah backcraft mempunyai satu deputy yang membiayai itu dengan gratis, siapapun hmm. punya produk kita daftarkan hak cipta dan mereknya. Ya. Terus Backcraft juga punya deputi akses permodalan. Negara, pemerintah belum bisa kasih modal, tapi hmm. kita mengajak uh, monetary authority ya, OJK, perbankan segala untuk masuk ke sini. Ini bisnis baru, kita harus nyusun bersama. Hmm. Lalu ada akses pemasaran, ya kita kadang membawa mereka untuk ikut trade show di Tokyo, kemarin di Southwest SX, di Texas, saya juga membawa beberapa delegasi ke Sebit di Jerman. Ya. Nah, Bekra sendiri memiliki target kira-kira berapa misalnya startup atau entrepreneurs yang dicetak per tahun idealnya? Minimum. Tahun lalu 50, tahun ini saya target 100. 100 Apa startup. yang strateginya sehingga bisa dua kali lipat? Nah, strateginya tentu cari talent. Nah, 
di satu talent scoutnya seluruh Indonesia seluruh Indonesia maka di saat itu kita punya lagi satu program namanya Backcraft Developer Day tahun ini kita jalankan di 10 kota ya ini udah tiga kota kemarin hmm. ada Bogor Manado Solo masing-masing di atas 500 yang datang dua minggu lagi kita akan ke sini ada 10 di mana di situ kita nampung mereka akan menjadi entrepreneur dan akan menjadi tenaga kerjanya hmm. di kampung saya harus dapatkan minimal 2000 untuk mencetak 100 startup. Hmm. Jadi nggak bisa kita mau cetak 100 startup, kita cuma ngelola 100. It will come to 10 nanti cuma. Hmm. Tapi And, itu kan berarti ada filtering yang luar biasa ketatnya ya. Untuk, untuk mendapatkan 50 minimal 1000. Apa kira-kira yang menjadi... Uh, meng- Membuat misalnya orang ini atau tim ini berhasil sementara yang ini gugur. Nah, yang kebanyakan itu gugur. Selama tiga bulan itu kan ada perjalanannya. This is not about, bukan training, bukan juga workshop. Memang ada silabusnya, tapi penggemblengan sebenarnya. Hmm, yang penggemblengan. Gebl- penggemblengan saya bilang. Selama berapa? Tiga, tiga bulan. Tiga bulan? Ya, tiap weekend aja. Uh-huh. Itu dikasih PR, dikasih PR, dikasih PR. Kadang-kadang mereka ada yang dua kali nggak datang ya quit. Uh-huh. Kalian nggak komit. Komitmen is number one for being an entrepreneur. Ya. Dan siapa yang gembleng? Minimum, minimum kita kasih yang gembleng itu juga entrepreneurs yang sudah menjalankan kegiatan bisnisnya tiga tahun. Jadi harus entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Nah di situ seleksi ada 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 parameternya. Oke. Okay, Dan rata-rata harus. mereka dari mana latar belakangnya banyak, yang ikut, banyak ya? fresh graduate latar belakang macam-macam. Bisa ada yang teknologi dan ekonomi. Mereka harus apply. Eh? Atau waktu kita di... keliling itu mereka, mereka nanti apply. kita buka boot situ siapa yang silakan mm-hmm. daftar. Harus dari mereka. Tapi kita kasih opportunity sebanyak lebar. Kalau depan yang 100 ini yang uh, jadi setiap tahun mungkin harusnya semakin lama semakin bertambah tapi kan pasti antara yang sudah lulus ini <coughs> tidak akan semuanya akan menjadi sesuatu yang besar atau berhasil. Nah, Backcraft sampai kapan bisa membantu atau memfasilitasi dan juga sama Backcraft ada. <laughs> Karena isa Continuous ya, terus yeah. ya. Silicon Valley juga 50 tahun gitu, terus bangun. Karena nanti beberapa dari mereka juga ada yang gugur atau merger hmm. atau sekarang kita harus harus siap itu itu that's business. Ya. Dan Backcraft juga nanti bekerja sama dengan angel investor atau yes. venture capitalist. Yes, di acara ini banyak ketemu untuk membantu ya. Yes, venture yang, yang mereka tertarik. Tadi nah, pagi saya ngomong di season great opportunity. Pak Hari, memang kita banyak sekali anak-anak muda kreatif terbukti ya tapi secara keseluruhan apa kendala yang paling ini besar lah bagi khususnya entrepreneurs atau yang entrepreneurs serta yang startup yang ada di Indonesia Oke okay, tadi ada kita punya ada tiga sebenarnya access to funding mm-hmm. government regulation nah itu yang sampai Sama sekarang masih people, bongkar pasang ya. kan kita lagi ada satu deputi akses permodalan sedang bekerja sama dengan otoritas jasa keuangan untuk menggarap itu. Nah di ekosistem startup yang bagus itu untuk startup ada keringanan pajak, untuk venture capital hmm. yang membiayai juga ada keringanan. Kita sedang berjuang untuk seperti hmm. itu sehingga ada insentif-insentif. Nah regulasi itu kan penting juga ya, hmm. apalagi. Uh, kalau misalnya suatu model dari bisnisnya kan sudah digunakan oleh masyarakat ini saya berpikir mengenai misalnya Gojek, Uber dan aplikasi transportasi dan lain sebagainya. Kira-kira ke, ke depannya ini regulasi dan startup ini bagaimana peran Backcraft untuk Memang ke, regulasi biasanya selalu tertinggal. Selalu tertinggal dengan inovasi. Hmm. Maka di Backcraft ada satu deputy yang naik deputy kekayaan itu dan regulasi inilah yang akan menjembatani itu waktu itu dengan transportasi online ini juga ya kita tahun lalu ikut berperan hmm. untuk tidak melarang karena this is the new model ya dan kita kalau kita itu tutup kreativitas akan tutup juga nanti tidak ada kreatif lagi di Indonesia tidak ada bisnis lagi karena yang kita takutkan hmm. adalah brain drain Iya betul, mereka pada lari, lari. keluar dan menyumbang kepada tempat. ekonomi negara lain Tapi biasanya para regulator bagaimana? Mereka tanggap nggak? Atau sudah mulai paham Sekarang bahwa mulai 
dunia itu sudah berubah yes, yes. dalam sekarang dan walaupun ada masih jalan panjang tapi akselerasinya terjadi ya karena if 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 we don't do that we will die itu hmm. aja optionnya apa sih die biasanya kan kalau kreativitas entrepreneurship dan lain sebagainya itu juga uh, talent itu kan sangat tergantung pada lingkungan juga dan peluang mendapatkan pendidikan dan lain sebagainya. Nah Indonesia kan kita tahu kan sangat timpang ya. Mungkin banyak sekali di Jakarta sekolah-sekolah bagus dengan uh, anak-anak muda yang entrepreneurial. Tapi di Indonesia secara keseluruhan bagaimana membuat sinergi dengan institusi pendidikan supaya mereka juga diajarkan mengenai how to be an entrepreneur, khususnya how to set up a new Ada beberapa universitas mulai membawakan nuansa entrepreneurship, belum semua. Dan kebetulan saya juga suka ke, ke mereka, hmm. saya kasih tahu bahwa apapun itu ke fakultas teknik atau ekonomi, manajemen, saatnya sekarang membawa materi kuliah, entrepreneurs dan creativity. Because the next economy setelah kemarin adalah creative economy, experience economy. Hmm. Yaitu masa depan kalau kita tidak antisipasi kan. Beberapa universitas mulai mengajarkan seperti itu ya. Mulai ada Bekra di, sendiri tidak kolaborasi atau kerjasama ada, dengan Ada deputy yang kampus. deputy pendidikan, ada kerjasama kampus dengan ITB, dengan UI, dengan UNS, dengan UGM. Kita masukkan itu. Hmm. Harus. Nah di luar itu juga yang tadi Backcraft Developer Day adalah mengisi uh, keluaran universitas dengan yang dibutuhkan industri dengan skill-skill tambahan. Hmm. Itu online. Global Ventures Summit ini, bagaimana uh, Indonesia itu dilihat oleh kacamata para investor asing pada keseluruhannya? Apakah mereka melihat, wah ini potensi pasar yang sangat-sangat menarik dan nah. di mana mereka bisa ikut juga? Saya ketemu beberapa venture capital, crowdfunding, segala macam. Juga tadi ada beberapa startup yang ada di Indonesia, tapi sebenarnya dia orang asing. Yang sudah ada tiga tahun, tadi datang ke saya anak muda dari Kanada, kantornya di Bendungan Hilir, dia sudah tahu. So why, why did you came here? Kita tahu, saya dikasih tahu teman saya bahwa the opportunity is big. Jadi mereka sudah mulai saat, at least tiga tahun yang lalu. Nah, sampai ini diadakan, berarti ada, mm-hmm. ini kan asapnya, apinya sudah ada sebelum hype-nya. Sudah mengatakan bahwa Indonesia demikian seksi. Mm-hmm. Tadi pagi saya opening speech, saya bilang, We are one of the country in, in the world that have growth more than 5% a yeah. year. Give look to it. Gak banyak negara Eropa, gak segitu saya bilang. Kita agak unicorn juga. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, makanya. <laughs> This is negara sexy. Lain. So, saya bilang, our value proposition is, coba bekerja sama dengan our talented people, bring your investment, we give you our market. Mm-hmm. We both get benefit. Tapi merupakan tanggung jawab dari kita semua, semua. khususnya Backcraft untuk menciptakan talent-talent itu talent. sehingga ya tidak terjadi brain drain. Brain drain. Dan, Dan kita, kalau orang lain investor masuk ke Indonesia juga tidak ketinggalan. Dan ya, pokoknya semuanya ujung-ujungnya kita tetap kedaulatan negara tetap ada. Siapapun boleh masuk, tapi kita yang ngatur mereka gitu ya. This is our house. Iya, yeah, dan We, transfer of technology, yes. know-how, fundingnya. Yeah, kita itu. kan ada beberapa yang kita juga harus dibantu. Kita belum tahu teknologi ini, ada funding ini. Open aja. Oke, okay. lima tahun dari sekarang, berapa kira-kira jumlah startup yang ingin Pak Hari lihat ada di Indonesia? Startup teknologi punya target pemerintah itu ada seribu. Mm-hmm. Nah, untuk create seribu kan di tengah-tengah ada yang gagal-gagal. Itu seribu nanti yang jadi mm-hmm. gitu. Ya. Tapi saya ingin sih lebih dari itu ya. Ini gini. Sekarang the best country yang punya entrepreneurs itu 2% of the population. Kita baru 1,6. Yeah. Saya hitung-hitung untuk ngejar dua itu perlu 1,5 juta hmm. entrepreneurs lagi. Banyak. Nah, yang startup mungkin sebagai tapi masih banyak. Hmm. Ini bisnis ya. bukan uh, satu mati seribu tumbuh, tapi justru <laughs> seribu mati satu tumbuh. <laughs> Harus punya, hambatannya masih banyak, ya. mungkin di keluarga juga ada hambatan ya. Tiba-tiba seorang ibu nanya, anak ngapain kamu? Kapan dapat gaji? Pertanyaan <laughs> begitu. 
iya, apalagi calon juga, mertua iya, calon mertua lamar di bank nah, aja gitu kan? atau cari kerja kantoran iya. gajinya tetap dan dan dari kerja juga sekolah bulan. kita kan tidak diajarkan untuk jadi entrepreneur dari kecil kita sekolah bilang ibu ke pasar belikan ibu ke pasar beli. selalu diajarin beli nggak pernah diajarkan jual <laughs> That's, kita point, harus bangun itu ya, kreativitas yes, itu yes. memang uh, bukan sesuatu yang gampang ya ternyata nah, di situ harus, harus ada ada ininya lah nafas yang lebih panjang apalagi kalau kita cepat bosan kan nah itu 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 apa hmm. disiplin disiplin harus kita bangun iya. kadang-kadang kreator uh, juga kadang cepat bosanan nggak bisa hmm. kamu harus persisten iya. apalagi kalau kita meminta bantuan uang dari para investor yang mereka ik- ingin melihat komitmen ya. investor pertama melihat the foundersnya hmm. baru produknya kan dia kan ngasih duit nih iya. saya percaya gak dia punya kekuatan. Oke, okay, okay. Hari. Terima okay. kasih banyak. Terima kasih. Sukses ya. Semoga Sama-sama. Backcraft sesuai dengan misinya. Yeah. Ya, membangun industri kreatif di Indonesia. Oh. Jadi kita memiliki begitu banyak manusia-manusia kreatif sehingga tidak perlu lagi menjadi manusia konsumtif yeah, saja, betul. tapi jadi manusia pasal. yang produktif yes. ya. Sekali lagi terima kasih ya demikian insight kali ini semoga bermanfaat ya bincang-bincang kita kali ini dari Global Venture Summit di Bali dan mudah-mudahan juga akan membantu melahirkan ide-ide kreatif yang ada di Anda karena tampaknya semakin lama semakin banyak para investor tertarik untuk memberikan bantuan biaya funding terhadap ide-ide tersebut demikian. Saya Desi Anwar bersama Insight. Terima kasih atas perhatian Anda.